playing Beat Saber for about three years now. And in that time, I've invested over a thousand hours into the game. And over that time, I've learned a few tips and tricks that have really helped me get better at Beat Saber and help me play long term as well. So today, I'm going to share a few of my favorite tips and tricks with you. Now look, I don't claim to be the best at Beat Saber, but if you just want to learn how to confidently tackle and play hard Beat Saber songs, then this is the video for you. All right, let's dive in. Tip number one, just have fun. I know it sounds cliche, you gotta remember the Beat Saber is just a video game and how you have fun with it is entirely up to you. Some people find fun in it by improving their scores and getting highly ranked on the leaderboards, whereas some people, like me, have fun by just kind of dancing around, checking out different songs and maps and just having fun. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good or bad you are, it's just about having fun and only you can decide what you find fun. So if you're stressing about getting wrong notes or you're worried about your scores, it doesn't matter. Tip number two is use your wrists. A lot of beginner Beat Saber players usually use their whole arms when playing Beat Saber and that's absolutely fine but if you want to do kind of harder and faster songs then using your wrist is going to help you out a lot. You're going to be able to hit more notes and it's going to be less stressful on your arms. And to practice this I highly recommend playing a map Keep your elbows in the one spot and practice just playing with your wrists only. Don't do anything else. This is probably one of the biggest tips that I kind of knew about, but I struggled to really apply it. So it does take a bit of time for your arms to kind of naturally start using your wrists, but the more you practice it and consciously think about it, the more you're going to do it. In terms of your arms, the other part that's really helped me is your elbows. I find this really helps with stamina. If you have your elbows in the one spot all the time, your arms are going to get sore. So I find especially with faster maps, I adjust my elbows from being up high to down low if I'm doing really Really fast section and then I put them up again and then down low so it kind of changed between them but a lot of this is determined by what kind of maps you're playing not all techniques will work on all maps so it's about experimenting seeing what works and trying different things and kind of building up your own style of beat type of gameplay now tip number three is grip now this is a tip that personally doesn't work so well for me but it works for a lot of other players hence why I mention it and depending how you hold your controller can be a big game changer for the quest a really popular grip is the claw grip. That's when you use two fingers, put them through the little ring and hold it like this. It puts less stress in your arm and focuses more on the wrist movement so that can really improve it. Also gives you better grip, you're not like slipping or anything. There's a few other grip types as well. There's like an M grip where you hold on to the analog stick. I personally usually kind of have one finger out and I find that works best for me. But I've also been experimenting with the claw grip but with uh, three fingers. I have tiny hands so uh, I really struggle with like two finger claw grip. So three finger claw grip is what works for me But ultimately you just want to experiment with different grips and see what works for you So along with grip types you can experiment with a few different things like angles of the saber There is an option there where you can adjust the angles of your saber So a lot of valve index players instead of having the saber come out the front It kind of comes out the side So you're playing more like this rather than like this The other thing you could do if you're on quest is experiment with different grips This is a kiwi extended grip so it's longer which I find the grip really nice You can tighten the strap as well well, but it adds a bit more weight, so not ideal for everyone. I also made a video about using tennis grip around the controller as well. That can really improve your grip. Only thing is though, once you have it on, you can't really take the battery cover off. Tip number four is environment. A lot of people play Beat Saber in different areas of your house, but there are some things that can cause tracking issues that you have to be aware of. Mirrors is especially a big one, so I suggest covering with a towel. Also certain lights can do it, like Christmas lights can mess up with the sensors. Because the Quest uses the sensors on the front of the headset and it can only see a certain way. So also being conscious of the area that it's tracking and adjusting your gameplay to be in those areas can really help as well. If you put the controller behind your body, it's not going to be able to see it. So you need to think about that when playing Beat Saber, that you're playing in front of yourself and not going too far behind your body. And there's lots of little things as well that can help tracking. Like if you're playing against a plain wall, there's nothing for the tracking to bounce off. It needs objects in the room for the tracking to bounce off. So if you see, I have this big blank wall here, but I have these stickers that I put up. So that way the tracking can see that on the wall and have something to bounce off and measure the distance in the space. Another tip as well is having a dedicated space for playing VR with some cushioning, maybe a rug or some foam tiles. And this is great so you know exactly where your play space is, so you can walk around and know exactly where the end is. And also, if you want to dance in Beat Saber, knowing that you have a space, a safe space that you can dance in with, without kind of accidentally knocking anything, can really kind of help you 
unleash when playing Beat Saber and being able to confidently dance around and have fun. Tip number five is don't think. This one's a bit of a weird one and it's kind of hard to explain. I find the more you focus on hitting the blocks or if you're looking at your score, I find the worse you're going to play. Our brains are so amazing at unlocking these flow states and these flow states are where your brain kind of hits this meditative peak where you're able to kind of just zone out and have this meditative approach to doing these hard tasks. There's even science about it. Yes, yeah, science! But the more you practice Beat Saber, the more you'll understand this. But sometimes forcing yourself not to overthink can be really helpful. So something I do if I'm struggling on a really hard section, I start saying the alphabet in my head. So instead of focusing on the blocks coming towards me, I'm distracting my brain so then that muscle memory is just taking over. You are is understanding scoring. So for every block you slice, you're able to get a top score of 115. But to get that full score, you have to do three different things all at once in like that split second. And that's where full swing comes in. Full swing is the word designed to help players understand how they should be swinging and hitting the blocks. To score the first 70 points of the slice, you want to start from a 90 to 100 degree angle, and then you want to slice down to about a 60 degree angle. So swiping from a 100 degree angle will give you 70 points, following through to a 60 degree angle will give you 30 30 points and then slicing straight down the middle will give you 15 points and if you do all that you should be able to get the full slice of 115. Obviously this sounds easy in theory but it's quite hard in practice. So if you really want to challenge yourself with Beat Saber, understanding that accuracy is the best way to make your way up the ranks. Tip number seven is stretch. If you're new to Beat Saber you're probably like I don't need that. But as a long-term Beat Saber player, you need to stretch. Even if you're a young whippersnapper and you have no issues, you will eventually. So you need to stretch. It's the biggest advice I can give to anyone. But there are very certain ways you need to stretch. So this is what I do for my Beat Saber recovery. And I'm not a physio, so don't sue me. So before playing Beat Saber, you wanna do dynamic stretches. And dynamic stretches are movement-based exercises that help activate your muscles before doing any sort of exercise. So most commonly, I try and activate my shoulders, my forearms, and my wrists. So I usually do kind of like rotating exercises or like crunch exercises with the shoulders. One of my favorite things that's helped me a lot is using one of those exercise bands. Using that when doing my dynamic stretching before playing Beat Saber really helps activate everything and there's a bunch of different exercises you can do so it's definitely a good investment. Then after you finish doing Beat Saber, you want to do your static stretches. So there's type of stretches where you're holding a muscle and you can kind of feel it stretching and elongating. They're your static stretches and they're the best ones to do after Beat Saber and depending what type of areas in your body that you get pain or fatigue they're usually the ones I try and focus on and the other part of helping your body for Beat Saber is generally just working out to improve strength in your body so you can play Beat Saber longer and faster I've especially found doing like pull-ups at the gym really useful or anything that helps improve your grip strength and a lot of that stuff you can do from home I've also been focusing lately on trying to improve my wrist strength so I've been doing little weight exercises with a little weight. Uh, if you don't have one, you can also use a can of beans or something. Something that's gonna help you increase the strength in your wrist because you don't wanna get RSI. You can also get these little stretch elastic things which attach in your hands and can kind of stretch them out and improve the strength through here. So all these little things may not sound important if you're new to Beat Saber, or, but long term, this is gonna help you play Beat Saber in the long run. Tip number eight is height. Another setting to experiment with your Beat Saber gameplay is adjusting the height. By default, it's automatically gonna adjust the height to your actual height, but depending on the song or your gameplay style, you may actually benefit from a lower or a higher height. I find on my Valve Index that I like to have the height a little bit lower, but then when I play on my quest, I sometimes like to have the height a little bit higher as well, so you can kind of go on your tippy toes and then set the height. I find the higher height on the quest helps me keep my arms in front of me more, which is then better for tracking. But again, this is a personal preference thing and something I recommend experimenting with and seeing what works. For you. Now number nine is optimize. Now depending on what VR headset you're playing on or, or if you're running particular mods, there are lots of little tweaks you can do that can just make the game run better. One thing I like to do in the settings, especially if I'm playing fast song, is disable lights. There's an option in your player options where you can disable lights so you don't have all those flickering lights at you all the time, which makes the game run better and it's just less stress on your eyeballs. There's also an option to reduce debris so when you slice the block, the block splits in half and flies off into the atmosphere, which looks really cool, but again, it's using processing power to do that. 
You can also go into your settings and in the graphics tab, turn stuff down there. On PC, you can turn off the smoke, you can turn down the anti-aliasing, you can turn off the mirror, which is where the floor looks shiny. All of these things make the game look great, but again, uses processing power. In terms of settings to make the game kind of just better for you, you can also adjust jump duration, and that's how quickly the notes spawn in and how fast they kind of come towards you. Changing and experimenting with this can help you process notes faster or quicker, depending on your preference. And then there's the whole world of mods. So if you own a quest and haven't modded your quest yet for custom songs or mods. I have my own tutorial for you, link down below if you want to do that. There's a bunch of mods you can add to your Beat Saber that help you improve your gameplay. There's ones that give you a visualizer for your slices so you can understand how you're slicing your blocks and what you're doing wrong. There's literally so many mods that I can't name any in particular, but you get the idea. But it's saying that if you have too many mods, that can also cause lag. So it's a fine balance. And tip number 10, the last tip is just practice. You know I had to say it, practice makes perfect. It's that anything in life, the more you practice it, the more you're gonna get better at it. But not only that, when it comes to Beat Saber, you do start to build up your muscle memory and it does become a lot easier. And over time, when it comes to Beat Saber mapping, you do start to recognize common patterns for Beat Saber maps. A lot of the time, Beat Saber players are able to sight read because they know common patterns that they see in Beat Saber and they're able to just naturally be able to go through those patterns because because they play them all the time. So that pretty much wraps up my top 10 tips for Beat Saber. That's a mouthful. And I hope this helped you with your Beat Saber, whether you're a new player or a more advanced player. And again, I don't claim to be a pro, but I have left some links down below if you wanna watch some actual pros give advice on how to get better at Beat Saber. But if you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Today, we're finally checking out the MetaQuest Pro. If you don't know what the Quest Pro is, it's Meta's new high-end VR headset that's designed for productivity, but we're gonna see how it runs with actual gaming.